Hi, I'm Dr. Sanjay Sharma, a podiatric surgeon practicing in Bangalore. So this video is uh, looking at what is the different uh, symptoms, signs and how to manage diabetic foot. So one of the questions that came in um, through MedLife was um, what causes a diabetic foot or how does diabetes causes diabetic foot? So diabetes affects the nerves in the periphery, especially in the foot and the limbs. Um, so there are three kinds of nerves that we can see. So we have there are autonomous nerves, there are sensory nerves and there are motor nerves. As the name itself depicts, autonomous nerves are something which controls anything that is happening automatic in the body. It could be blood circulation, it could be sweating, it could be just closing and opening of your eyelids your digestion, all of them where you, you do not control it, it happens automatically is managed by the autonomous nerves. The sensory nerves, again as the name depicts, it controls all the sensations. It could be your touch, your pressure, your heart or cold. All of these sensations are controlled by the sensory nerves. And the last one is the motor nerves, which is uh, all your movement. Like I'm moving my hands now, this is controlled by the motor nerves. I'm, you're moving your legs, you're walking, all those things are voluntary and they're controlled by the, motor, by the motor nerves. In diabetes, all these three nerves are affected and thus causing a condition called diabetic peripheral neuropathy, which is one of the things which uh, in the phylothra of um, conditions um, that happens uh, in a diabetic foot. The second condition that we could see in a diabetic foot is uh, peripheral vascular disease. As the nerves are affected, similarly the vasculature or the blood circulation in the foot is also affected. And this uh, causes various skin changes that we see in the body or especially see in the legs. Uh, this causes poor circulation, blisters, it doesn't heal, the, even a small cuts, minor, minor bruises, blisters, injuries do not heal. The third condition that we could see uh, in the diabetic foot is the changes in your gait, the changes in the shape of the foot. Um, so when you're walking, there might be a change, the way you walk, you might start walking slower, um, there might be changes in the foot shape. For example, if this is a typical foot that we could see, the, this is the arch that is here, the arch might raise like this, the or it might flatten like this. So there are changes in the foot that we could see. So all the three of these, the peripheral vascular disease, the diabetic peripheral neuropathy and the changes in the shape of the foot and the gait will combinedly is called a diabetic foot. So what could be the symptoms of a diabetic foot? As I just told earlier, uh, we have three conditions in the diabetic foot. The very early signs which are commonly uh, ignored by the patients and the doctors also is um, kind of change in the shape of the foot. Um, very minute changes uh, where we really cannot uh, depict saying, uh, saying that it has become a flat foot or a high arch foot kind of a thing. But the pressures on the different areas of the foot changes. This is a very, very early sign that we can see. So it's important uh, for the patient to have a screening of the foot every year, even though there are no other specific symptoms that he sees in the foot. Your body weight needs to be distributed evenly in the foot. And if there is any change in that uh, after uh, having diabetes, that is a cause of worry. So we need to look at the plantar pressure scan at least once a year as a part of the screening process for your diabetic foot. The other sensations that are caused due to peripheral neuropathy are the tingling sensation, the burning sensation, pain and there are also some things called as uh, the negative sensations or the negative symptoms. All this which I said, the tingling sensation, the burning, the pain and all those things are the positive symptoms. You f you're feeling something there. There is, there is something that worries you and will take you to a doctor. There is, in a diabetic neuropathy, there is something called a negative symptom where you don't feel anything. So that is also cause of a concern because you don't feel anything, you don't go to a doctor saying that there is some, there is some issue with the foot. So that, that's something that we need to be looking out for that if you are 
having a small scratch or you are having a small blister or some injury you like you touch the door or the wall with your foot and if you don't feel anything there then also you need to meet the doctor immediately so that's about the neuropathic symptoms i talked about the peripheral vascular disease and that, those are also have early symptoms typically hair fall in and around the leg i'm just about the foot about the ankle if there is if there are hairs there will be hair fall there um there will be the skin will be pretty shiny even though if you haven't put any moisturizer or anything just about the ankle in between the knee and the ankle the skin would be pretty shiny so these are the early signs for a peripheral vascular disease and the last one as we discussed was the gait changes or the shape changes uh, i told you already about the shape change where the plantar pressure scan would be necessary there are big gait changes your walking might sl- might slow down or your step length could be lesser or it could get longer there are those minute changes that you can observe or anybody in your family member can observe and saying that are these days you are walking fast are these days you are walking slower so these are the early signs that we could see uh, in a diabetic uh, foot conditions beyond this when the patient have ignored these early signs we can get to a a little bit advanced signs where it is obvious for the patient and obvious for the doctor to look at oh there there is a problem with the with the feet so these are um the signs like there is something walking over your foot even though nothing is there like an ant walking crawling on the foot excruciating pain uh, especially in the night like in which doesn't allow you to sleep burning sensation in the foot which again doesn't allow you to sleep and there could be small blisters corns calluses like all through your life you might not have a single callus or a corn but suddenly you start feeling that that, that that there are corns and calluses in the foot there are blisters in the foot which are not healing uh, or it takes a longer time to heal so these are the uh, signs that you could see at a later stage in terms of the peripheral vascular disease you could see changes like the discoloration of the skin there could be small bluish spots or reddish spots over the foot uh, which are the later signs or the advanced signs of the peripheral vascular disease and uh, if you look at the last one the gait changes there would be significant uh, postural change or a gait change where your footwear uh, start to wear out on a wear, on a single side or um, you would start feeling the pain of it you would start have a limping gait um so uh, these are the advanced signs that we could see or everyone can see and say point out that there is something wrong with the foot and most of the times we see that the patients would come in where there are advanced uh, signs to check with the doctor or the diabetologist saying that there is some there is some issue with the foot so there are multiple myths about the diabetic foot one of the myths that i've been hearing is um anybody who is diagnosed with a diabetic foot has to undergo an amputation no it is not so only if you ignore the early signs and the late signs of a diabetic foot and keep ignoring it that would lead to an amputation um so for example let me say um you have a callus in the foot or a you know a thickened skin in the foot and that thickened skin you ignore and um after some time it becomes an, a small wound or an ulcer that happens there there is a cut in the skin and um, when there is a cut in the skin again you ignore just apply a normal ointment and bandage yourself or a local physician uh, would say nothing would happen to it and you ignore it that becomes a bigger ulcer and um, there is ig- infection in it because you don't offload it the ulcer has con- continuous pressures on that ulcer um, and and an open wound will cause infection infection is not treated properly it spreads this is the stage when amputation starts happening this is the stage when gangrene starts happening so if you are taking care of the foot at a very early stages like when you have a callus when you have a small blister when you have a small infection in the nail all these things if if it is not ignored and taken care at the very early stage you need not undergo any kind of amputation the other myth that we already see is 
you should not put your foot in the water or you know, if there is an ulcer in the foot you should not uh, put water on the ulcer that this is a complete myth and the diabetics the doctors say do not soak your foot in hot water just because of the sake that the foot has lost its sensation ability to sense heat or warmth so a very hot water where you, you the skin doesn't sense it you could burn the skin because you do not know how much hot is hot for the feet so soaking is okay but only after checking the what the temperature of the water either through your uh, fingers or through your elbow elbow i'm saying because at some times the hand also could have had the peripheral neuropathy or this hand could have been very much used to you know carry hot stuff in the kitchen if you are a woman or the man who is uh, you know working in a kitchen for a long time this could have been used to those um, hotness so check it with your elbow uh, here um, or um, just the finger at the back of your uh, uh, hand and for thing for the temperatures and then uh, soak the water uh, soak your foot in the water for some time also ensure that once you take the foot out of the water it needs to be dried it needs to be cleaned because a lot of moisture uh, prevailing in between the fingers or in between the toes of the foot will cause a fungal infection again leading to a diabetic foot ulcer and blah 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 as i told you earlier so just ensure that whenever you soak in the water check the temperature of the water ensure that it is warm not hot and then once you take the foot out of the water ensure that it is dried completely without any moisture in between so knowing the symptoms and the signs um, of a diabetic foot so let's look at how do we prevent uh, any of these diabetic foot conditions being happening one first and the foremost diabetes control is absolutely necessary if you are not controlling the diabetes for say your hba1c levels are like 10 14 consistently then no amount of these tips and tricks or medications would help the first the diabetes control keeping it ensuring is ensuring it trying it to have it the hba1c levels are what we call as a 3 month average at around 7 is absolutely necessary to you know stop the diabetic foot condition to happen so assuming that you are taking care of your diabetes a few things that you could look at um, in the diabetic foot uh, to prevent any further conditions is what i say commonly is treat your foot as your face if you are looking at your face every day in the mirror look at your foot every day if you cannot look at your foot use a mirror to look at your foot at the bottom of the feet at the sides and everything just look at see if there is any small scar blemish blister color change anything in the foot that you see different than the yesterday that has to be noted and brought to the notice of your doctor the second thing is wash your feet every day with warm water clean your feet absolutely in between the toes all over the feet and hygiene is most important and after washing ensure that it is dried don't walk around in wet foot especially in between the fingers or in between the toes as we say it needs to be dried up the third thing that you will have to look at is as i said the autonomous nervous system might also be affected your hydration of the skin might not be adequate ensure that you moisturize your foot twice a day absolutely like once before going to the bed and second time after after the shower it has to be has to be moisturized avoid any dry skins that that shows up on your foot any white patches of dry skin also needs to be looked at you can use a simple moisturizers that are available uh, off the market there are exclusive diabetic foot uh, moisturizers um, that that are available which has some medications uh, uh, like capsian and other things um, you can use them or a simple virgin coconut oil should be good enough so then comes what you should not do 
if you are a diabetic and if you are want to take care of your foot and to ensure that you don't end up in a diabetic foot condition there are things that you should not do one whenever you are cutting your nails do not cut too closely to the skin uh, so we need to ensure that the la- the nails are cut square and at the level of the skin not below the level of the skin and don't cut in the corners too close to the skin uh these could affect your the the formation of the nails end up in ending up in a nail injury or an ingrown toenail further leading to the cascading effect of ulcer infection amputation etc so just ensure that you don't cut the nail very close to the skin if you are a person who is going for pedicure regularly ask your pedicurist not to do your cuticles we are not sure how hygienic uh, are they and also they are not trained if something happens so the cuticle removal has to be avoided when you are doing your pedicure and also ask your pedicurist not to cut the nails too closely to the skin and maintain hygiene all the instruments that they use needs to be sterilized needs to be clean not reused from one person to other person um and um, the pedicurist herself need to do the pedicure with the glove on one more thing that people tend to ignore is um, once they grow old the nails get thickened and they think that this is probably um, you know an, an old age condition and why should i take care of the nail now let it be kind of a thing but that's a huge cause of concern any thickening in the nails needs to be addressed immediately it could be a fungal infection any discoloration in the nails should be addressed and also the shape changes in the foot you know one of the toes like this coming over this or these shape changes going going away from each other is usually ignored uh, in terms of it could be an old age phenomena or who looks at the foot but that is not just the look of the foot but that is a, a a symptom of a diabetic foot condition so any changes in the shape that you see the bone moving away the changes in the nail discoloration of the nail needs to be looked at immediately a few things that you can look at on a daily routine uh, is uh, increase your uh, intake of uh, capsicum or green chilies this should really help in regenerating the the degenerated nerves and also um, a con- a continuous use of the omega 3 fatty acids either in in terms of flax seeds or uh, the capsules uh, that are available off the shelf in the market should be good enough to prevent these diabetic foot conditions right knowledge is right health hope you like this video subscribe to our channel for more such videos